Okay, we're ready. I have the closed captioning and recording going. Excellent. Welcome everybody to the November meeting of the Yarmouth Energy Committee. Um, we have a crowd today. We're uh, eight people strong, I believe. Um, do we have any members of the public who'd um, like to identify themselves and say hello? Okay, seeing none. Um, let's move on to approval of the last meeting minutes. And Madam Secretary, the floor is yours. I was late sending the um, minutes out, but I had no feedback. So apparently no one had uh, anything that they thought was an error. I thought they looked good. In the absence of, um, of comments and corrections, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of accepting the, the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, Cape Light Compact, um, not a lot of news. Um, the next Compact board meeting is um, going to be a week from tomorrow, Wednesday, November 9th at 2 p.m. at the Cape Light Compact. Um, things are getting ever busier with energy audits and the number for those is 800-787-6699. Cause I guess we can't put it in the minutes too often. Okay, the next item on the agenda hey, is hey, the George. Sorry, Joyce? My, Bob? It, oh, Barry. I've had a question. Um, yep, on, on go right ahead. Do, do you recall, I can't recall, do you know when the next contract cycle for power purchase um, arises? I, I recall, you know, attending a board meeting of the compact last year that in which some board members began a discussion about what the compact's goal should be the next time, um, it's, it's time to go out for uh, power acquisition in terms of how, um, you know, what level of renewable um, power oh, yeah, what, be in what, the mix. What, so, what and, percentage and, and, of, so percentage there was of a, class one recs, yeah. Yeah, basically. So did, what's the date when that gets, uh, right for I, decision. And, I, like, I know we're in an ex I know we're in an extension right now that didn't require a new contract. Um, let me find that out and get back to you. And I'll also get back to Marilyn in case anybody else is interested. We can put that in the minutes. Um, Mario Marchand is the person to who now handles that at the compact. So I'll get in touch with her and and check. Certainly, I haven't missed any board meetings and there hasn't been any discussion um, in the ones since August um, about uh, power supply or putting together a subcommittee. So I would say not right away, but I'll check. Have the rates for January been published yet? Um, I believe they were just put up on the website, but I'm not sure about that. If not, they'll be published in um Gosh, the next 21 days. They're going to be higher than they were for the warm weather, and they're going to be higher than they were, you know, last year, the year before. It's going to be grim. But you'd be glad to know there's all sorts of federal and, and state aid that has been expanded. Okay, um, so that's that's what's up with the compact. Um, I put down. Oh, Amanda, are you there? Yes. Amanda. Yes, I'm here. Oh, I just wondered if you had um, a sense of which elect. I accidentally skipped over your item, of which um, electric vehicle chargers are are working that are owned by the town. Yeah, uh, so they are all working except for at the senior center from what I've um, been communicated on a message. Uh, we're trying to get in the works and we're 
uh, hopefully getting there. Uh, you know, typically we have maintenance agreements for like our streets lights uh -huh. um, and, you know, different elements for DPW, um, but we didn't have a contract for maintaining the electric vehicle charging units, whether they get damaged through the vandalism uh, or they just stop working. And we don't really have uh, anyone on staff that's an expert in those. So I'm working through that. But Arden, who through the Cape Lock Compact has a, a bid, who does our, can we can use for our street lights, is also um, certified and able to do our charging units. So I'm trying to get um, that in the works as part of our ops budget this year uh, so that those can, you know, once we put one in, they're not just, you know, worked until they don't work and then no one fixes them. So, um, so that's uh, in the works right now. I think okay, the thank the you. Senior, senior senators probably stopped working from lack of use, just <laughs> atrophied. Uh, well, they uh, actually got vandalized. And then there was another piece that got was covered under warranty, which Maverick, who was our contractor, um, was able to advocate for through Juicebox and Anel. Um, so we did get the replacement one, but then their project manager, who was really responsive and they're a great company, um, did leave. So, you know, once you lose that, you know, connection, it's kind of hard to rebuild it again. So we're uh, in the works trying to figure out whether we get a contract with them or if, you know, we use Arden to try to, you know, get those up and running again. Yeah, that, that one in the senior center is practically, I mean, I mean who, who goes, who goes into the far corner of the senior center uh. yeah so again obviously when eversource you know was implementing that project they were going to do what was cost effective to them yes exactly so, i mean i you know i didn't, I didn't <laughs> see those until they were in construction uh, but that would have been something you know if you know if we had had more time to review it then you know a lot of feedback would have been to move them it doesn't make sense for them to be in the back corner but that was the cheapest for them because they were you know paying for it so um but yeah no i think we'll have more in you know more involvement moving forward rather than them just handing us a design and constructing it so because we did do that because in between they had um shifted one of the golf course ones to the dpw so we chose they wanted to put it in one spot and we were like no and we told them where we wanted it and that one's used all the time so oh okay the one at dpw yeah yeah. Okay. The, the reason I, I asked was that um, there was quite a little flurry on next door. I think um, Bob was part of that flurry. And um, people were wondering about town installations and also um, whether they were free, but they are still free, right? For now? Yes, for now. Okay. Sounds good. Well, listen, thank you for that. And we'll steer everybody away from the one by the senior center rec space. <laughs> okay. And then I do have updates okay. in regards to the CVAC too, if you'd like. Oh, that would be great. Sure. Thank you. So I, I gave an update last uh, month in regards to the one that's at the septage facility we call Parcel E. Um, after that meeting, so that was in, that's in round five of CVAC. And, um, and so that one has been in the same status quo, uh, but I have updates regarding four and six. Um, so CVAC has reached out and has said that they are not moving forward with round six and to familiarize that would be the DPW and the fire station three um, PV. So that one has been um, canceled as of right now. And then uh, round four is the senior center. So all the permits are in hand, but now they're just um, trying to get materials. So they've got like the PV, excuse me, it's my turn. Okay. Um, they have their materials regarding the electrical stuff. It's just a little bit, um, no, thank you. Um, a little bit more delayed, so. Yeah. Okay, so it, it looks like um, six is going to be in limbo till CVEC decides certain things, but parcel four will go ahead, and it looks as if for the um, um, electric vehicle charger at the senior center, the funding for that will come out of um, tax year 2024, so not till the summer. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think we're just trying to figure out what kind of what would a maintenance program look like for for the charging units and um, kind of getting a better understanding on how much they're costing. Okay. Now, does anybody um, who's who's over the age of eight have any questions for Amanda? <laughs> how about Yanda eight definitely will. <laughs> what a cutie thing. Thank you, Amanda, for bringing them on board. 
<laughs> oh. Well, Amanda, if there aren't any, any more questions for you, um, I guess we can let you go, but we appreciate the update because, you know, it's just one of those um, slow processes with step, 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 and it helps to know where in the steps we are, like probably halfway up the stairs. That's great. We're getting two for the price of one here. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be an invoice to follow. <laughs> oh, you want to say bye? <laughs> bye, bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. Okay. Well, and now the average age of the meeting has gone way high. Um, <laughs> Marilyn, um, you're next on the program. Um, and I know you had some um, new ideas for Georgia Lair Memorial proposal. You know, if we're not going to be able to be funding the scholarship every year, and if they're not going to have anything that isn't learning how to create video games as STEM side. I um I did get to talk to uh, Robbie, and um, uh -huh. she told me that there was a a document with information about doing an island garden. And she was going oh. to spend, send it to me, but I think she got busy and forgot. I could ask her again. But the thing that she did tell me that caught my attention was that um, if you have one of those islands and there are some available, you have to maintain it because they okay. only have four people in the park department who are totally maxed out doing, you know, all the landscaping for the town, uh, mm -hmm. mowing lawns and whatever. And I didn't think that any of us would be able to do that maintenance. So mm. the idea that I was thinking is if we could get permission and if people thought it was a good idea to get either a portrait or a large framed picture of George and put it in the town hall or okay. possibly one of the schools. So I don't know how people would feel about that. Um, you know, and I, and I don't know if it would be permissible. Okay, anybody um, have any thoughts about that? When you're talking about the gardens, you're talking about the community gardens? No, a, a memorial garden. Ah, okay. You know, for George. Yeah. And we yeah, all... The, the cute little things that you see whenever you go by a corner that looks attractive, it's usually one of those. Yeah. Most of them are taken care of by the Yarmouth Garden Club, I think, huh? aren't they? Um, there are yeah, some. Should, we should all join. <laughs> <laughs> well, she did say that you know, if you are approved to get one, that you are responsible for the maintenance. And um, so I don't know if we if we could contact the garden club and ask them if they would take care of it. I I know that uh, I have trouble taking care of my own yet this these days. So um, I didn't think that it would be feasible to to you know get into a some a situation where you couldn't do what you were supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. That is always the trouble. Like look what Amanda was saying with the electric vehicle charger, you know, maintenance contract, you know, we um we always need to allow for future upkeep, I guess, with all our ideas. So I don't know if anybody has any feelings about that suggestion. Um if they do, I could try to uh, you know, contact Robbie and ask her if that would be a possibility. And maybe if not the town hall, the school, one of the schools. Isn't the rail cha trail already named for for uh, George or the, uh, at least a part of it that goes yeah. from, uh, through Yarmouth? Uh, could we do something to add to that, add to the rail trail? I huh. I don't know, you know, what you would think of adding. Well, maybe a plaque at the bridge. Although I, I I've never been 
at the uh, the bridge crossing into Dennis. Uh, is there already a plaque somewhere there? Or, uh... One of the I know for that, but always too fast to notice. <laughs> One of the um, up in the Chatham area, they have like stations that you can fill, um, like a like an air pump and stuff. I don't know how much they cost, but maybe install one um, somewhere near there in his and a little plaque in his memory. Um, they had two or three of those air pump stations. So in case you got a flat tire on the way or whatever, they had like, a, it was like a tool thing. So they had little screwdrivers and things that you could fix your bike, but maybe something like that on the way with a plaque. I'm not sure that it, a uh, picture of George in the schools would no one really in the schools except for me probably yeah were were intertwined with George um and now I'm gone uh they don't even really even put principals or anybody up in the schools because the kids don't know who they are so in the school I'm not sure if it would get a um a view however in town hall but I don't know how you get permission for that and how you get your picture in the town hall. I don't know if there's mm -hmm. requirements. Yeah. Maybe we can talk offline, Marilyn, and brainstorm. Okay. okay. There's yeah. also the parking lot that's next to the overpass over Station Ave. There's, a, there's that parking lot there for bikers to park and get onto the trail right there. Uh, we might think of, I've never been in there and think about doing something there. Hmm. Uh, you know, Marilyn, uh, using we, that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, riding my bike from there, I don't know, up th through Dennis into Brewster. But uh, I never saw that thing you were just mentioning, Sandy, about. Really? It's in Chatham and it's on the left hand side. You, you go right, so. over a road where there's a doctor's office. And then they have like three pumps and they have like um, an attachment with the different little wrenches and stuff. So if you had trouble that you could tighten or do whatever. And I goes, that's a great idea because so many times I always carry my pump with me and my tools, but sometimes you don't. I carry it, but I have no idea how to put it together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I was trying to think how this fit in the larger scheme of town things. And it occurred to me that it would bring up an interesting question about, you know, because they do do the art exhibits on the upper floor with, you know, Yarmouth painters. Um, it would bring up an interesting space question. And then it occurred to me that um, within the last week, Frank Fredrickson retired, you know, much beloved, you know, great guy. Mm -hmm. But um, also, um, of course, Bob Lawton is central, although I know he has, you know, his... Um, his H2O bus stations named for him. And I was thinking, well, gosh, so, you know, would it, if, if people set aside a portrait place, you know, even for photos, would they run out of room? And then it occurred to me, you know, what would be nice when people come in um, from the side door and then go up the stairs, somewhere along there, suppose we had um, a little screen that had those kind of changing photos so that you could see important leaders from the past and George could be a photo and Bob Lawton and um, Frank Fredrickson. It just seemed like that might be a, um, a nice thing to do that maybe wouldn't take up much space um, and that we might be able to get um, through the town more easily. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't have any idea. I mean, I've I've seen little ones. My um, um, uh, high tech brother in law has those all over the place, but I'm I'm sure they must make big ones, or medium ones. I have no idea the price line either. I'm going to look into it. Do you want me to um, ask uh, Robbie about it or? Maybe Sandy and I can chat first, and then I could contact uh, Robbie. Yeah, why don't you and Sandy chat first, and then and then um, hit up Robbie? Okay. I think I, I think you probably want to have it 
And you might want to even peek into town hall and see what you thought the best place was. I think as specific as possible might be more likely to get through the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Oh, I forget. We can now say select board because the woman who insisted on being called a selectman has, has retired. Our select board. OSB instead of BOS. <laughs> Okay, so we'll we'll look to hear back at a future meeting then about how that's going. I think it's a really good idea because um, we are at a real crossroads with the uh, Georgia Lair thing, and it would be nice to have something that would be that would be there that showed that he had been in this town, worked hard for this town, and made a difference. And I, I think the picture idea is really good. Okay, anything else on Georgia Lair? Okay, well, moving on to an update um, on Solarize Plus Yarmouth. Um, there's been um, a, a lively development. The um, um, information meeting for creditors, which would include our various customers of Solar Wolf, and for all the other um, customers of Solar Wolf who are far beyond Solarize Yarmouth. And there were quite a few people there, especially given the short notice, because a lot of people had just applied to be certified as creditors, but not in enough time to get an invitation to the meeting. So uh, there were 40 some on there at the middle of the meeting. The meeting went three hours. Three and a half. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, but who counts the fractions? Um, and and then um, there's going to be another one on on December seventh. So it's not as if you know everything is is completely done. Um, I had expected that to be um, sort of like an information session for creditors. Sandy, was that what you expected? Yes. Uh, and I was amazed that you know, what we might think of as the perp and his lawyer were there. Um, and at one point, the um, magistrate seemed to insist that we had to direct our questions to said perp. Um, it was it was quite interesting. Um, I, I think I learned think... a lot about bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more than, than I'll ever need it the rest of my life, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, and then all the all the things that um, that you probably shouldn't do, like close six bank accounts just before bankruptcy, that kind of thing. Um, that was an interesting and possibly the most amusing um, thing, and you, you, you needed amusing after you know a couple hours. Um, which you know, was, one of the um, things that that I thought about is he says he he has no copy of the contracts he had with. With uh, uh, what's the sun oh, clean energy center? No, with the sun power. He said, "Oh, they're all the, oh, only, right. sun, <laughs> only sun power has copies of them because we had that docu. I signed them with that docu sign. So mm -hmm. you mean he didn't even keep one one copy? He didn't even print one out. Apparently, in yeah. the computer file. Uh, they're probably all on the servers at the office. Yeah." I liked it when he said he couldn't talk because he was on a ventilator. <laughs> I missed that. What? He said he was in therapy, but he's on a ventilator too. He said I'm having a hard time talking because I got the, I'm on a ventilator. Wow. <laughs> Maybe somebody strangled him. <laughs> that the odds would seem high. <laughs> well, the What's interesting the thing to me the about the bank. What was the main oh. takeaway from that meeting? Main that, that takeaway much more was that information is needed from 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 uh, from him. I mean, we're only at the beginning of the process of figuring out of him telling, you know, the uh, trustee, what is Myrick, uh, the what, trustee, Valdiga, Joe Valdiga, the information he needs to do the work that he has to do. And the stuff has already been sent back to Ted once, 
and he because he filed on September 23rd and his he didn't have enough information in two categories and uh, creditors and assets you know, the only two categories that mattered so he was given an extension till Friday October 14th and then apparently he still hasn't submitted everything he should submit one of the things that he did say is now we were all told that he built that new building he leased and owned it. it yes yeah he yeah. only leased that's it. what we were gave, told and he gave the lease away before he filed bankruptcy he gave the lease back so there is no Except money he, the, basically yeah, he what wasn't you took out of to it be... there's no money anywhere yeah it's all sun power's fault um, he had, and he certainly claimed, I mean, to our um, customers as well as to um, Solarize volunteers that he owned that building, had it custom built for their needs, you know, and even had his his wolf thing on top of it. That was that was really a sign that he either, if he's talking, he's lying, or that um, he really is delusional. But the trustee well, said there was absolutely nothing in the building except for a couple of panels, two batteries. So I guess that Centennial's battery and my battery are there, um, though they never got installed. And Well, you uh, signed up first, first, first dibs. I don't want it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but it, there's nothing left. It, and they have a few servers that they are going to collect because they're going to get some of the files off of it now to see if they can mm -hmm. get some of the documentation. But other than that, he has no money even to get his statements from the bank and his lawyer doesn't wanna pay for the statements. So um, I guess they were looking for free, um, free information from the bank, but it was very disheartening. Yeah. And with the bank about the closed accounts, you know, he couldn't afford the fees it would take for the bank research because they were closed accounts. But then when the uh, trustee suggested uh, a subpoena would get them without bank fees, um, Ted indicated that he could not afford a subpoena. Um, and then his, well, I guess it would be six subpoenas. Um, and then his um, his lawyer said, you know, that he was going to food pantries and he, he couldn't afford the subpoena fees. And this kind of um, dragging out and, and kind of low level resisting and going nowhere continued for a little bit. And finally, one of the attorneys for a, a solar a solar wolf customer who was not a solarized Yarmouth customer said, "I'll pay for the subpoenas," and so that's how the bank information is going to be turned up. In the meantime, by the way, there's some good news for our solarized Yarmouth customers. Um, the last ones. Um, who who lack a a simple small thing are going to be taken care of. I mean, some people have gone ahead and they're already in the process getting things done with um, um, other solar contractors. And then of course the money for that counts as part of their loss through Solar Wolf when they total up and you know um, file. But um, the for those who haven't on a timetable that I'm not sure of. CEC is sending down technicians and um, they're going to inspect all those. And Sandy, if you want yours inspected by CEC as well, I'll, I'll put you down for an extra inspection. Please do. I haven't okay. heard from um, the contractor yet, but he's got his money and he's just trying to fit me in. Okay. Yeah. I plan on calling him tomorrow. Oh, good. Um, and Sandy's working with Blue Cell, which with E2 Solar, they're the two um, big um, solarized dealers on the Cape, but they have been understandably wary about taking up the burden of, um, of solarized. But they are the Sun Power uh, subcontractors? Yes. Well, they're actually master dealers, which means that their people went through like all sorts of special training hoops um, to get certified, um, not just as a dealer, as um, Solar Wolf did, um, but as a master dealer. Um, and so they actually operate some trainings and stuff like that. Um, but they deliberately didn't bid 
um, because um, as someone mentioned to Sandy, um, they felt that uh, Civil Rights Massachusetts programs always go for the cheapest price. That's all they care about. And that, that was not true with Civil Rights Yarmouth. I mean, there was in, right in the bid, it was strong preference for local dealer, but what are you gonna do? But now the two SunPower dealers are in competition with SunPower because of the change in management in um, uh, early spring 2021 at the national level, SunPower is now coming in and selling and marketing on its own and selling directly to, to customers. So I've- and They're not doing it through Sunrun or people like that? Uh... They're, they, well, they're, um, they're hiring people um, to do it. And the way that we found out about that was um, with our list of Solarize Yarmouth customers and people who had Yarmouth addresses who filed complaints against uh, Solar Wolf with the um, Attorney General, it turned out that um, some of the non fulfillment by Solar Wolf wasn't in the Solarize Yarmouth program. And it turned out that three customers that we know of in Yarmouth, and who knows how many elsewhere on the Cape, um, were installed by Solar Wolf as a subcontractor, but the orders went through SunPower in Connecticut. And some of the time when we were hearing COVID excuses and medical excuses from um, from Solar Wolf, I'm afraid that they were installing for other customers. February, for example, one definitely in February. Well, I just assumed that all along. Oh, well, see, you were a step ahead of me, Bob. <laughs> I was I was sure they were doing work for other people. <laughs> I just kept thinking that the Auburn Mass zip code was like some sort of health black hole that you had to kind of drive around if you were on the Mass Pike. You have to be very careful even, even slowing down. But apparently, at least some of the health excuses and maybe the majority of them were um, not factual. See, the, the, the Solarize program, its big weakness is they could take in the money, but there was no, there was no way of bringing in pressure on them to do the work. Whereas when yeah. they were working for SunPower, uh, doing installations elsewhere, you know, SunPower had, had some clout. Yeah. And also, remember, um, Solarize Massachusetts had that um, that stipulation that each installation ordered to the program must be completed and all connected with the state programs, you know, and and with net metering. Um, but by the one year anniversary date of the contract, so our people started signing up in April, and then, you know, one year and a couple of weeks later, Solar work disappeared and they were only at the time they disappeared they were only in violation of one contract i mean if you take out the the um the panels that weren't connected or and if you take out the batteries that didn't arrive there was one installation um that somebody who signed up the last week of april in 2021 and when solar wolf passed that date in the last week of April 22, suddenly that was the first time that they were fully in violation of their contract with the CEC. Anybody have anything else they want to add on that? Our um, our monthly update, which which I've put you all on the list to get. Um, will be going out sometime overnight tonight. So um, that will summarize um, a lot of the information that you might be interested in. Like if you want a transcript of the, uh, of the uh, creditors um, sessions with the trustee, you can get either a, um, an audio tape or you can get a, um, the written transcript. Um, there's some, um, additional information and addresses and stuff like that. So you should have everything that the customers have um, when you open your email tomorrow morning. I have the recording. 
Oh, yours has come already. Yes. They seem to be taking a little time to transcribe, maybe uh, because there were so many interruptions. I talked to Washington, D.C., and I had the, C they sent it as a CD, said she couldn't send it to me by email because it was so large, so she put it on a CD. <laughs> I asked if it could go on a flash drive, and they said because of the encryption, they couldn't. They had to do it on the CD, so I have a CD on my table right now. I'm sorry, wow. so what's that? A CD of what? Of the um, hearing, the bankruptcy hearing. The, the, you know, the creditor session, hour? yeah. The three and a half hour? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why did you have to talk to Washington, D.C.? Because Washington, the U.S. trustees is what who gives us the recordings. Yeah, bankruptcy is federal, so. So you can get the transcript through the lawyers, but in order to get the recordings, you have to go to the United States um, office, treasurer's office, trustees. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. It comes in as USTP out of Portland, Maine though her call came in from Washington, D.C. Go figure. Well, it's nice to think that the whole East Coast is aware of our difficulties. Okay, anything else about Solarize? Um, I Where think are you going really... oh, I'll be you. Bob, I could hear part of that, sorry. So my wife was calling me. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that's allowed, I guess. I mean, she she wanted to ask me a question, wasn't aware I was on the Zoom. Oh, okay. Um, so if there's nothing else about Solarize, we'll move on. Um, the next item, and I'll speed through this since we started late. We have a wonderful briefing from KO Law PC. Um, that's the Compax Law Firm. It's two people who... Uh, we're um, in uh, BCK Law, which was the law firm that we had before. And then the B in that, um, uh, Jeff Bernstein retired, but he wanted to keep the name in case, yeah, up in Vermont where he's retired, um, in case he wanted to do, you know, follow up on an old case or, you know, represent an old client. So um, the, uh, the K and O are Kiernan and O'Toole. Um, and they went back and forth. Shall we call ourselves OK Law or KO Law? Well, you know, KO Law won that one. <laughs> anyway, so don't think that this is, is my brilliant stuff or um, my research. This is coming from them and generously shared. And um, I, I'll have to talk with Sandy and Marilyn about... Um, possibly putting this um, as a link on the website because it would be long and um, an odd shape to have on our page, but I can, I can send everybody to the exact website within the compact that has it. So that might, that might do the trick. Okay. So um, this is uh, Audrey Kiernan's um, high level overview, as she says, of the, uh, the federal legislation. And what she did was she picked out things that she thought would be of interest here on Cape Cod and on Martha's Vineyard. And of interest because of this sort of um, energy efficiency programs that the compact runs. Um, Sandy, are you able to get those up? Well, let me see. I'll go to my share screen. I'd start with slide three if we were going to do that. So anyway, the, um, the things that she thought were most important to um, compact board members, staff, and customers were that um, uh, tax credits will be reinstated for renewable technologies and a longer time frame, and of course, a higher percentage, 30%. So that that gives stability for you know um, developing projects in a way that um, changing administrations have yanked out from under solar developers and their customers before. 
Um, there are also individual rebates for energy efficiency appliances. All of this um, looking, of course, toward encouraging electrification. Um, big grant funding to state energy offices for home energy um, performance-based rebates. Interestingly, that's not going to go to the PA board, the program administrators. Um, that would be um, representatives of all the uh, uh, investor-owned utilities plus the, the odd, oddball, the, the nonprofit compact. That's usually what okays um, and designs energy efficiency programs. And then they go to DPU and, you know, get downsized and um, perhaps not resulting in exactly the, um, the large result that the um, program administrators, one nonprofit member would think would be desirable. But interestingly, these, these are going to go to and be administered by the um, Department of Energy Resources. So that's going to give a different spin on things. And DOER is very much into greening energy as well as electrification, as well as, um, you know, making uh, buildings um, weatherproof and saving on heating and all of that. So that, that might make for a more... Um, energetic and visionary spin on this. Um, there's also going to be a separate funding stream that's going to go to state energy officials for whole home electrification for low and moderate income households. Um, the low income part there will remind you very much of the uh, Cape Light Compact's proposal for its CVEO program, where they were trying to um, start a pilot program that would give um, low-income customers, solar and batteries, um, and the ability to become almost self-sustaining in terms of energy costs. And um, that got denied um, in this three-year program, which ends in one, one year and two months. Um, that got denied in that by the DPU and the compact fought it and came back and now there's been a technical session in September with the compact and the DPU. And some of those things are back in, in a modest way. Um, although I think the federal pressure on that made, made a big difference. The other big thing is lots of um, um, assistance to the states for training and education for um, contractors um, to train them in electrification projects, but also in just general energy efficiency. Um, we can probably skip over the commercial stuff as less interest to our group. So that would move us to slide six. Um, this is probably a big one for people in Yarmouth. Um, the residential tax deductions and credits. Um, the uh, uh, tax credit that was at 23% and was going to drop down further at the end of this year is now enhanced up to 30% and renewed through 2032. Um, and in 2033, it drops to 26%. So that's a huge win, especially, I mean, as we noticed with our solarized program, um, what happens if you fall into, if your solar contractor doesn't get your job done by December 31st of a year and the incentives on which you've counted go down on January 1st? This seems to be a way to, to give customers um, a better option for planning um, that they'll get the uh, same rebate the next year. Um, there's going to be more credits for energy efficiency uh, um, work than there was previously. Um, notice that that's only for property placed in service after 2022 and through 2032, and it does have an annual limit, but that's huge. Um, and notice that the long list of things includes windows, which people always ask the compact about, weatherization, electric panels, and then all different kinds of heat pumps. Um, I'm looking at the biomass stoves and boilers, and I believe that those are in the federal program but not allowed anymore as so-called renewable sources of power um, in our state program here. 
and obviously um, it's extending a um, existing energy efficiency home credit for uh, people doing um, um, home developing and producing manufactured energy efficient homes because that seems like that will help the housing crisis as well as the energy crisis. Um, standalone energy storage is now eligible for the uh, production tax credit. Um, that previously was only eligible for that federal tax credit if you ordered your energy and had it installed at the same time as your panels. Then it would be one big tax credit. But if you just ordered a battery on your own, nothing. Yeah. Um, so that also gets around, um, well, the situation that Sandy and Ed Centeo found themselves in, where they had their panels installed, but their batteries hadn't arrived. And their batteries went to another calendar year and, you know, seemed to be, you know, ever, ever further away in the mists. And so... Um, Anyway, Sandy, if you run out and buy a battery in a year or two after you're, you know, well over the taste of Solarize, um, that will count as um, a tax credit. Um, interconnection properties, um, that's kind of complicated, but that involves um, um, the kinds of things that you'd need to upgrade your electricity to be able to do some of the projects that involve renewables. And also, there, um, I have no idea how this will work. And Audrey, in presenting this, said, you know, that, as always, the devil's in the details. But somehow, municipalities, tribes, and nonprofits may be eligible for production tax credits and ITCs as well with a direct pay election. I'm sure that um, a tax attorney would understand how that worked, but it's something I don't understand, but they would get, um, they would get something that would be financially worthwhile to them out of that. Um, let's see the, uh, the grants to state energy offices. Uh, we've already mentioned the home energy performance based whole house rebates. Also the high, uh, efficiency electric home rebate program. Um, this would be for totally electric homes. Um, with new efficient electric uh, appliances and it, specifically for low and moderate income households. So that could be a very big break. And it's important, I think, for low and moderate income households that it's a rebate rather than a tax credit. Um, let's see. And then a, a thing that might take the rebate away from them, the low and moderate incomes and those working on their behalf for example, program administrators or the compact may receive the rebate. So we'll see, devil in details. Um, more funding for low income and disadvantaged communities. And remember that with Solarize Yarmouth, um, Yarmouth had enough people at poverty level and um, free lunch in the schools that we counted as a disadvantaged community at least in, in some of our sectors, or some of our blocks. So um, don't think that, um, that Yarmouth doesn't qualify for that because whole sections of Yarmouth do. Um, let's see, environmental and climate justice block grants for community-led investments in low and zero emission and resilient technologies, related infrastructure, da, da, da. That might be something um, that would, um, um, be something like community solar, or it might also be something like the um, the new solar field that's going up behind Eversource headquarters on Willow Street. In um, I think it's still in Yarmouth Port, but it might by then be in West Yarmouth, um, where they're um, they're putting up a big solar field um, as a special exception because. Um, um, distribution companies aren't allowed to own um, solar power generating facilities, but this one was a special exception for um, helping low-income people um, because uh, what they're going to do is sell that electricity at a reduced rate um, to people who have, you know, cert been certified as low-income. So they'll get um, a little bit off um, each kilowatt hour. 
So then um, more things um, that will involve incredibly complex programs, energy efficiency training for contractors, zero energy code adoption. Um, Barry, I'm sure you're very interested in this one. Um, it seems that uh, um, they're going to be encouraging state and local governments to uh, go for um, ever greener energy codes, which, of course, they already have to with the uh, stretch code changing every year and the building code changing every year. But it seems like this is um, enhanced pressure in the in the direction of, of renewables. So um, is there anything else here that's important to us? Um, interesting stuff about funding and where you can get your funding streams from if you're a state and you have some things that you haven't used. Um, I'm thinking of the Massachusetts surplus under, under that thing at the bottom of uh, slide 11 because we do have that surplus and there's also uh, federal aid. So that might be um, a healthier package than a lot of states would be able to put together. Um, okay, so for the compact new vehicle for CVEO, DOER is going to administer a pilot for 10 municipalities. Um, and some compact members may be eligible. Um, two places on the vineyard have started the process. So far as I know, no Cape communities have started the process. And um, it might be interesting to um, speak with Maggie. Um, all of the compact had, as a result of their technical session with the DPU, a big deadline of today, November 1st, to file a whole lot of um, altered and, and um, you know, changed financing of a number of programs. Um, and they'll start to be a little bit freer as of tomorrow. So it might be interesting to talk to Maggie. If any of us were interested in trying to pursue having Yarmouth being one of those pilot 10 municipalities, it may not be possible, given that there are already two in the Cape and Islands region. And of course, they're both also in um, southeastern Mass, but it, it might be worth looking into. Then finally, um, the uh, no fossil fuel equipment will be supported in any way. And um, that's something that was a, a bone of contention last year. Um, it very closely, um, fossil fuel funding for highly efficient um, oil-powered furnaces, boilers, um, just lost um, in terms of funding by the Cape Light Compact in its last three-year program. But with the DPU, um, where the utilities really have the upper hand, that was restored. So what that means is um, that probably after the last year of this year's three-year energy plan for program administrators in Massachusetts. Um, that ends at the end of 2023. I think that we can be sure there will be no more anything for fossil fuel equipments, you know, for any income sector. Okay, new models for um, CVEO, that's all gonna be redesigned and um, they're gonna be things submitted for next July. So there's not really much that we can talk about there. And um, notice the uh, the kinds of things that are being considered for municipality pilot pilot program qualifications, banning fossil fuel in new buildings. Um, Barry, I'm, I know that's a big interest to you. Um, uh, municipalities with local approval, and you'd have to go through the legislature for a home rule petition. But th those are in anything except the case of Old Kings Highway. Those are granted pretty easily. Um, and then um, municipality has to meet its affordable housing requirements or, you know, have a um, multifamily housing by right ordinance. Um, and government entities are exempt from formal procure procurement requirements for energy conservation services under 300,000. And um, large buildings have to report annually um, with their distribution companies, that would be Eversource here, on their building energy use. So I think that's mainly what we want to cover here, but you can see that this is really well put together by uh, KO Law, 
and we're very grateful that they were willing to um, allow us to share it. Grid modernization comes back. Um, our uh, our uh, dis distribution company, Eversource, has been a bear about grid modernization um, and also about things like time of use electricity. And uh, this should be a big help with that. If we were in national grid territory, like much of the state of Massachusetts and the island of Nantucket, we would already have a lot of this stuff by now. I mean, we'd have time of use and we'd have some other experimental programs. Okay, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, if any of you want to volunteer to be part of a stakeholder working group with the DPU, go do it. Electric vehicles, big help. Um, much more stuff for s charging stations, both um, persuasion and um, and funding. So I think that that will that will be a big help because you see, I mean, we can't even at this point afford a maintenance contract without going to the next fiscal year for our existing EV stations. Okay, I'm done. I'm sure you probably have points you want to bring up or questions. Um, I wish that I were Audrey, but I will do my best from the ad address she gave to the Cape Light Compact. The, the, this is all great. I mean, I, I think I would like to try to read the whole whole thing. But as as some of us who were in, in our next door grouping, there has recently been discussion of electric vehicles and how they're going to overwhelm the grid uh, and and things like that. Is there any way that a lot of this stuff could be made more public? Uh, or is it just not worth it because these these people have these these points of view based on uh, you know radical memes uh, that are totally anti renewables and particularly uh, electric I thought vehicles. that I thought some of the next door stuff against electric vehicles seemed a little barking mad, but. Um, yes, of course it is. I mean, the first time I saw some real, real sort of that kind of stuff that you see on Facebook all the time. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think the grid needs to be strengthened for sure, and um, that's not just for electric vehicles. I think that's actually even. Um, regional security, national security, you know, all the kind of um, existential things. Um, I don't have a sense of how much capacity, say, um, our local um, regional distributor, Eversource, um, could handle if, like, say, everybody on Energy Committee and everybody on all the other town committees in Yarmouth went out and bought EVs next week. Um, assuming some of them are charging in their garage with their solar. Um, but that would be an interesting question to dig into. You know, what kind of um, shortfalls are we talking about? Um, are we talking about ones that are very unlikely to happen um, given the slow rate of electrical, electric vehicle purchasing? Um, I think it would be useful to kind of turn up some stuff about um, how much power uh, Eversource, you know, just do just like as a regional thing, how much power Eversource was able to uh, supply to the Cape and Islands um, if, say, a certain specific number of EVs were added. That's interesting. Barry, do you have any thoughts on this? I know you've thought a lot about the EV question. Looks like Barry signed off. Uh, well, homework for next meeting, Barry, wherever you are. Um, okay, so any any other thoughts on this? Um, I was just wondering if I could get the link to that document, because obviously I wouldn't try to capture all of that in the minutes. Yep, if, I, if... I think that's a wonderful suggestion. Um, just, just think of taking notes on, you know, 19 pages of things. 
No, nope. yeah. I think the link is perfect, and we can we can emphasize, you know, maybe with some bold stuff around it. Here's a good explanation of some of the enhanced incentives, yeah. the enhanced state and federal incentives, and then just give them the link. Yep. So I'll I'll, send, I'll send that right can along. You send to us you. all the link. Oh sure. Well, I actually can send all of you the PDF of this. You want that? Or, or, or I could send you both. Okay, both. Both. Okay. Let me write this down. In addition to Sandy's inspection, let's see. And link as well as PDF. Okay. Okay, got it. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess that we're up to member announcements and suggestions for future agenda items. Let's put Barry down for 20 minutes on electrical, electric vehicle um, um, resources that might or might not overwhelm the grid. 20 minutes next time. What do you think? <laughs> About an hour and a half. <laughs> okay, that works. That works. So anyway, do any of you have anything you'd like put on future agendas? What we have coming up, um, and that will be our first hybrid meeting, although I hope people can make it in person because I'm planning refreshments, um, will be their December meeting. Um, the reason that that couldn't be um, this week was that Kyle Petticini, who's the person in charge of um, all the things for Zoom meetings, left for a better paying economic development position over in Barnstable. I mean, apparently there's a huge pay difference. I mean, more than 20%. That's what happened so with my secretary. Must... She went to oh, Barnstable. Like, like... <clears throat> oh, yep, yep. So- um, Tired and young. So... <laughs> they, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, they're using all that money they're getting from Vineyard Wind and Mayflower and Etc. Yep. for all those those uh, high voltage electric cable onshore yep. arrivals. Uh, Just think what we could have done with that hundred thousand a year in rental fees. I mean, sprinkled it across the town employees would have been great for morale. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, if nobody has um, any. Um, any suggestions? I just point out Camilla's talking to us next time. She's very interested in um, underlining that a lot of the energy improvements to structures um, don't have to cost a lot. So we'll we'll rely on her architectural wisdom and her creativity to show us some some good hacks. Um, now I just want to remind everybody um, we have to, and this is the point at, um, at which we have to do it um, every two years we have to do a state training in conflict of interest and an open meeting law. And the open meeting law training is, is fairly simple. These things are online, of course, with uh, the Commonwealth. Um, the conflict of interest training, I don't know if you all remember, because two years is a long time. Um, the conflict of interest training is uh, um, a PowerPoint with some um, state personalities kind of pointing out this and that, um, and then a quiz to follow. Um, and you have um, uh, several choices for the quiz, and you have to uh, get a certain number of those right. But what happens is they correct you as you go along, and um, at the end, you could retake the test and go back and get those right. But no I think role probably... playing? Huh? No role playing? No, I'm afraid not. No, just, you know, you, you alone with the computer, you know, kind of saying, nah, that's conflict of interest. <laughs> one of the, one of the um, fascinating examples they give, but these are sort of randomized, is um, a Pittsfield, Massachusetts, out in my hometown in the Berkshires example, of a mayor accepting um, Red Sox tickets. Uh, might even have been for a playoff game or a World Series or something, um, and thinking he was just fine because he paid the business that was offering him those the uh, face value of the ticket. 
and of course that was found not to actually be the 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 real market value of the ticket so i mean that was a conflict of interest thing where he got he got slapped for taking what what the state considered a gratuity but they have they have some very strict rules some of them might be of interest especially if you're ever um giving gifts to town employees um, remember, Sandy, when you got a baby gift for a compact employee, and then there was all sorts of nervousness about, gee, did it cost over the amount that was the limit? Of course, it was for the baby, not for the compact staff member exactly, but, you know, and, I mean, they can be quite persnickety about those sometimes. Um, open meeting law is simpler and probably... Uh, um, we should all go through that individually, but then um, have a couple key points highlighted next meeting, because that's the kind of thing that um, um, people seem to be getting in trouble a lot with lately. Not us, and we really try on that, but there have been some outrageous examples on a, a committee that oversees zip code 02675, and the Board of Selectmen has been um, reported twice, um, and that is all working its way through the system. Um, I don't believe they're going to be found guilty of the um, of the uh, open meeting law violations for the meetings that they had. I think it was a kind of hostile thing by someone who goes around and reports these on the part of all different towns a lot. But nevertheless, you're there and you have to admit that this has happened and you have to um, have an um, executive session to confer about, because it's a legal situation, what should be your response and all that. So uh, um, it's a serious thing. And Yarmouth, I think, will be very sensitive to it for a while because um, a certain gadfly you know, reported the Board of Selectmen for, for two different ones within a six-month period. Okay. Well, I guess if we have nothing more, um, we'd all say goodbye um, until Tuesday, December 6th, St. Nicholas Day. Um, hope that we'll all meet um, in person in our beloved room A uh, with refreshments, and it'll be actually nice to see you in three dimensions again. Um, but to get to that state of freedom and expectation, we need a motion. Before we go, I will not be oh. around for the next four months. So if you are, do you still want to do a hybrid with Zoom? You know, I, I think we might have to now because they seem to think that all town meetings must be recorded. When I was asking um, the... Uh, uh, town clerk, remember back in August about whether we could have an outdoor meeting and, you know, whether we could, uh, as long as we um, taped it in some way, because she said they, they had to be taped, but no, our phones wouldn't do it. No, it had to be, you know, like real equipment, but it also seemed to be town equipment. I got the idea from that, that it is now, without anybody ever saying this is a requirement, this has become such an expectation of our town volunteer committees, even the ones that aren't regulatory, that I think that we um, end up being forced to do the Zoom in addition to the in-person. Well, I, I can double. I'll, I can double check with her again after the election when things have calmed down in that office. But I, I think that we might have to. What about if it was a webinar instead of a Zoom? I don't think the Board of Appeals has anybody taking notes. I think they just have the webinar. Is that an option? Hmm. Let me let me pose that to her. I mean, the thing about a webinar is that um, nobody can talk except committee members. And, you know, we sometimes do get questions that we can help with. Um, but I guess if it's a webinar, people could at least watch, even they, though they couldn't talk. Is that right. correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Number well, three. I can, still, I can still do the Zoom from New mm -hmm. Hampshire. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. But somebody in the meeting 
has to hook up on a telephone or whatever um, to be part of it so that we can record it. Yeah, and that was the problem this time because when Kyle left, they had him doing so many different jobs on top of what he was originally hired to do that um, nobody got trained to do the train committee people on that equipment before he left. So the town clerk is saying every minute... Every meeting has to be recorded, and there's nobody able to do that. Yeah, pretty much. So we yeah. could Zoom with with Sandy, but we didn't have a way um, to uh, to to do it hybrid today because <laughs> um, they they don't have anybody who can do the training. Now the IT guy who's head of this, who's head of IT. Um, is oh. aware of the problem, and I, they'll think they'll figure something out, but they just haven't quite gotten it figured out yet. Well, during Thanksgiving, I will be around, so if push comes to shove, I can go in and speak to Paul because I can probably show somebody how to use the equipment and get and get it done in there. Mike, actually, would you be going, or are you not going to be around? I'll be you there in December. Yeah, so you probably know how to set up all of it because you did it with your computer and had it. So it's just a matter of getting the camera set up so that it sees everybody in the room. I zoom in and go from there. But if I get there early enough, I should be able to figure it out. Yeah, um, maybe I can talk to Paul in the next few weeks and find out. Joyce, you find out what needs to be done. I'll find out. And then if I can get somebody trained from our committee, we can just do it from there. However. Okay, great. If, so I'll, I'll handle the town clerk. You'll handle IT. Yeah. The thing is, if, if, you, if we had a telephone or an iPad or a computer that could connect to Zoom in there, then you can do it. Because I'll be the host okay. still. You just need somebody in the room with the equipment. Um, okay. But like if Mike brought his his um, computer and just hooked up to the internet and put the Zoom on, then we can do it. Okay. I can do that. Well, it's, it's good to know that uh, what kind of equipment need we'll have because it seems like we will be having that for a while, um, that need. While, while you're up in New Hampshire, you snow bunny. Yeah. Um, the thing, all you need is a, a um, computer, iPad, telephone, something with the internet. Get on Zoom like we're doing right now. Have it in the room. Mm -hmm. I'd be in New Hampshire as the host. Mm -hmm. And it would be just like we're doing it today. Okay. Except some people would have refreshments, Cindy. And if you won't get refreshments <laughs> that way. Believe me, I can eat. I'll have my. I'll have my stuff. I won't have my gluten free, but. Yeah. Okay. Speaking okay, of refreshments, so, um, they're going to have pizza at the Cape Light Compact. Um, you know, the Cape Light Compact does have a pizza account, but um, we weren't actually going to invite them all. We were going to do Energy Committee and Yarmouth people, but the Cape Light Compact, I I see your point, comes with pizza. <laughs> yeah. but we love them yeah. even without that um okay so um i'll mike figure i'll come early so i can watch what you do and camilla maybe if you could come early and we could just take a really good look at at, at what's necessary for this um camilla and, is uh, not on this not here camilla hasn't not. been here oh didn't know that oh okay um well, I'll I'll email her about that then. Um, but uh, figure figure I'll be there anyway early just to kind of watch and try to figure out what you do when you set up. Okay. Okay. And we still would need some sort of motion to leave. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, well, thanks, everybody. And I'm so sorry for the um, having to phone in. Everything with the um, Comcast connection here seemed to be having trouble.
Um, happy Thanksgiving to you all, and see you December 6th. Same to you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.